So we had to make an emergency trip to Dollar General the other day. It's only a few miles down the road. It's no big deal. Typically, we go once a week, and that's usually on Fridays. And that, the, so we went on Wednesday. We'll still go on Friday because Friday is our ice cream day. We pick up a little thing of ice cream. We'll go get it, and we eat our ice cream on Fridays. It's just kind of our little treat. But we had to make an emergency trip. We ran out of something before we got to, to Friday. Doesn't happen very often. Day before yesterday, we had to go get our little chicks. And that was about 50 miles away. Well, when we went to buy the gas station, uh, the gas price was at $3.99 when we got the chicks. The next day, it was at $4.19. It had went up 20 cents overnight. So now Missouri is with the rest of the country, I guess, that we're over $4 a gallon on gasoline. Now, when gas prices got to $3.99, I stopped using the generator with gas. As you know, we have a propane gasoline dual fuel generator now. We also still have the old gas generator. I've been using it to use uh, to run the well. But I filled it up once when I put it over there, what, two or three weeks ago. And it's still got plenty of gas in it, so I don't use it very often. The reason I took that one out of service was because the rope broke on it, and I replaced the rope. And I figured, well, I'll just use that one as a backup. My plan had always been that I'd run that generator, that old generator, until it died, or until fuel prices got up to matching propane prices. And I've explained all this before, that we know that a tank of propane on this generator can last 30 hours. And so I did the math. If that lasts 30 hours, that costs 11 bucks, that tank then I would need uh, three gallons of gas. Well, three g gallons of gas times $4 is $12. So now propane is cheaper to run on that generator than gasoline is. The downside is, is the propane is about 20 miles away, which means I got to use gas to go get propane. Fortunately, it's by the grocery store that we go to. Now, admittedly, the propane I got it at a discount because I got a military discount. Normally it was running $14. That means gas prices would have gotten up to $7 a gallon for it to have paid for itself. But since I got the military discount, then the uh, propane was the way to go. So I switched over. So that was plan one, switch over from the old generator. Plan two was if it died. Well, it did die. The rope broke. And so I switched over to the new generator until I replaced the rope. That was a $30 thing that we had to do to fix. And I decided, you know what? I'm gonna keep that old one as a backup, run this old new one. That way, if the new one breaks, I can run the old one for a little while while I order another dual fuel one. That would take several days to get here through Amazon. If I had to rush out and get one, I would have to go to the tractor supply store and get a, just a single fuel, which is gas. The only thing they sell is the one I have, the old one I have, this one. And it's the same price as the dual fuel. So I figured if I keep this one, and if the new one breaks, it gives me plenty of time to replace the new one and get what I want. So I feel like we're really saving some money now because when gas prices reached, well, roughly about 370, propane costs became cheaper. Well, now it's 420. It's just completely cheaper. So, Carolyn and I are trying to figure out what we're going to do to really minimize our gas as gas prices just continue to go up. I mean, we've really been working the problem for several months now the propane generator, just all kinds of things. And the only gas product I got, like I said, that old generator, which runs well for about 10 minutes a day. I mean, it doesn't use a lot of gas. And even if I had to, I could run. The well on the new generator on propane it's just easier to do it this way but if we get, gas prices get too bad or whatever then i will switch the other thing we got is the lawnmower lawnmower uses about a gallon of gas to cut the grass well there's just no way i can do that that's just too much gas so what i've been doing i've only been cutting the grass every two weeks which is about all i can do anyways because it rains so much i can't really get in there to cut it so it grows up a little taller than I like. And I know a lot of people are going to say, well, you should cut it anyways because of snakes. 
but you just got to watch out for the snakes that's just the best thing to do i mean either you you deal with the snakes or you deal with the high gas prices and the high gas prices in my mind outweigh the snakes as much as i hate snake the truck has over just over three quarters of a tank of gas so then friday we got to go grocery shopping so we'll get more propane we'll get some groceries and then i'm going to take the gas cans i'm going to fill the truck up friday night before we go to dollar general get it completely topped off as best as i can with the gas cans then i'm going to fill the gas cans and that's what i'm going to do is i'm just going to cycle out the gas cans instead of just filling the truck up at the gas station that way that gas doesn't go bad the gas in the gas cans and then i'll fill the gas cans back up that way i'm always recycling it i'll also fill up the lawnmower before i leave i get the lawnmower full then i got all the maximum fuel capacity that i, I can handle i think we're getting in a serious situation depending on what news source you watch they're talking about a diesel shortage on the east coast and the two things that are driving this diesel shortage is there was a, a oil refinery company that blew up in 2019 but it didn't affect the gas at the time because of the pandemic nobody was using gas well now as we're getting back to pre-pandemic levels on gas usage that shortage from that refinery is starting to show its head Plus, they're blaming what's going on overseas in Ukraine. Now the United States is having to send more diesel overseas. So we're going to be at a shortage, which really doesn't make any sense to me that we're going to short ourselves to supply somebody else. But, you know, whatever. I have no control over that. I can only control what I do. Well, then it goes on and says that there is a potential that, that since there's a diesel fuel shortage, that there'll be a gas shortage. And the reason is, is because as people start to run out of diesel, they're going to start switching over to their gas powered vehicles. So like the husband may have a diesel pickup truck is what they're saying. Well, he may stop using the diesel pickup truck because there's no diesel and he'll start using his wife's car. So then they'll be driving the, the vehicle, the wife's car twice as much. She's got to go to work and he's got to go to work and he's got to pick her up and take her back home. So there's twice as much usage. Well, they're not ramping up any more production on gas, which we already know. So that could cause a shortage, more usage of, a, of the item because we ran out of a different item. I think things are getting serious. Now, you also got to remember this is going to affect everything. When there's a diesel shortage, there's no trucks to move product around. So how are you going to move the product around? Or if you are moving the product around, how much is it going to cost to move it? I don't know. Do they have a gas powered trucks maybe they start using gas powered trucks to move all this stuff around and then you're going to raise costs and i don't know it could be a real problem more shortages so carol and i have been really buckling down and trying to figure out are we okay can we survive without gas what happens if we run out of gas well propane to run the generator is just down the road i can walk to the gas station it would be a really expensive instead of the eleven dollars going to the gas station i'd pay twenty dollars so that's a nine dollar increase in propane but if there's no gas that is an option so what are we going to do about food if we can't afford to drive we're not going to have any food well there is a little mom and pop grocery store just down the road that we can walk to the problem with it is it's already high it's always been high it's a mom and pop store it's just pick up little knickknacks here and there so i mean if you're buying meat from that place oh my goodness it would be terribly expensive so we're looking at the chickens again of course can we survive with the chickens and we can we think that we could feed them quite well carolyn's been fermenting the food so she takes the food puts water in it let's sit for three days it ferments and they eat so much less food and they love it so what happens is, is their body uses the food that's fermented more efficiently their body's able to digest it better break it down and make it into more usable food whereas if you just give them the regular grains and stuff regular chicken food they don't break that down as well carolyn of course is going to start growing chicken food in the garden and corn stalks that kind of stuff they'll eat there's plenty of clover and, and things in the property that we can start raking up and giving to them as I cut the grass. Or if we can't cut grass because there's not enough gas, we have sickled this whole yard. We used a weed sickle. 
So we'd go back to doing that. Of course, I don't know if I'd weed sickle the whole yard every two weeks. I'd just sickle enough to feed the chickens and move on to the next patch. And yes, the wildlife is going to get bad, but that's just something that we're going to have to deal with. And so then I think everything else, we're fine. We got our electric needs taken care of. We got our water needs taken care of. The water, I've talked about the water quite a bit. If we can't run the well, let's say for some reason we run out of propane and gas, we could go down to a natural spring just down the road. It'd be a lot of work having to carry buckets of water back and forth. But go down the road, pick up a bucket of water from the spring, bring it back up here. That would give us water. So we got water. We think we have the food situation taken care of. We got Brahmas now. So during the summer and spring months, these chickens here, the ones we have, will produce eggs. And then the Brahmas will start producing eggs in the wintertime. So we got year-round food now. We got meat birds. We got 15 meat birds that we'll butcher in a few weeks. Then we'll do another batch of meat birds. We got nearly 200 cans or jars of canned meat. So we got plenty of meat. The other thing is, is if things get really bad, we would shut off the refrigerator and just eat canned food. The refrigerator takes a lot of our electricity. It takes most of our electricity. And so if we didn't need the refrigerator, we probably wouldn't need the generator at all. So if we incubate, that's the only electricity we'd have to use. Without the refrigerator, the incubator would be really easy to run. That would get rid of the, the propane cost, the gas cost. So I think we got everything figured out. So if you can click that super thanks button down there, I'd really appreciate it. So hope I can inspire you to get ready for the high gas cost. Seeing you live your dream. Thanks for watching.